In today's webinar, Dr. Marcelo Ucelio, Process Simulation Specialist at ProSimTech, will discuss key aspects of soybean deodorization and how to optimize it. He studied chemical engineering at National Technological University in Buenos Aires and received his PhD in engineering from the National University of La Paz. He is passionate about translating real-world renewable processes into simulation models, optimize and design, aiming to reduce both OPEX and CAPEX. After 15 years of experience oil refining, both in operations and engineering, he has developed a rigorous simulation model to be used in process optimization tasks. If you have any questions during the webinar, I ask that you please type them into the chat box on the screen. We will have time for Q&A after the presentation. With that, I'd like to say thank you, Marcelo, for presenting this webinar and sharing your knowledge with us. I'll turn it over to you. Hi, everyone. Um, first, I would like to thank to the AOCS team for inviting me to give this webinar uh, that I hope you enjoy. Um, in this webinar, which is episode one of, I hope, a series of three uh, episodes, the core idea is to show uh, how information technology applied to process optimization through process simulation can bring us a high added value for process optimization tasks to reduce operative expenses and finally to increase profit margin. Therefore, we will see the main characteristics of process simulation, uh, its methodology and the inherent benefits of its application, but also I am going to explain some key deodorization concepts that I think nobody explains um, in Congresses during presentations, okay? And of course, finally, since it is the core of this webinar, I am going to explain how is used my process simulation models for a soybean oil um, deodorization case study, analyzing how is the free fatty acid removal in each stage, how is the impact of changing steam injection strategies uh, during this removal, and what happens with OPEX, operative expenses, if we change uh, free fatty acid content in oil inlet at the deodorizer. Uh, then um, my voice is clear, right? Uh, the volume and so on. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Sounds okay. Good. Okay. Great. Great. Just, just to, to double check. Uh, okay. Just one last thing before starting. Um, as I said, I think in one of my uh, um, advertisement, uh, those interested in having a deodorization simulation model of their plant can send me an email, and uh, well. We are we, we then we exchange some information, uh, important information related to the process and the type of vegetable oil um, you you process, and then I can send you um, the customized deodorization simulation model of your plant. Okay, um, let us begin. Uh, okay, just a very short introduction about. Uh, Brosintex. Brosintex is the first independent consulting firm specialized um, in process simulation software or process simulation models for vegetable refining processes and downstream related processes such as water, enzymatic, and acid degumming, neutralization, deodorization, and physical refining uh, with different kind of uh, vacuum system. Also, I develop um, simulation model for thrombophoral and omega concentration processes, fatty acid distillation, biofuel production processes, and so on. And all these process simulation models uh, run inside uh, in Excel. Okay, and and then all the results from the simulation are exported, uh, exported sorry, to different Excel sheets for further analysis. We are going to see how. Uh, this simulation model works during the, the case study. <clears throat> okay, just to put things into a context, typically in a commodity business, such as vegetable oil commercialization, in which prices are fixed by international market according to offer and demand and financial aspects, 
all the efforts of producers are leaded to reduce OPEX. Okay, we, we know this. Uh, and I would say, in terms of uh, maximizing oil yield, okay, or, or, or to minimize neutral oil losses, um, reducing energy consumption, valorizing by product prices, okay, and minimizing, of course, the waste water. All this with the final objective of increasing profit margin. So, therefore, um, aiming to increase operational profit margin, process, as we know, process optimization tasks are a must. So, every time we execute an optimization task, we, we always have, let us say, a given objective of, of process or quality to be achieved which could be, for instance, uh, to, uh, to, ma uh, to maximize uh, the cofer concentration in distillate, uh, if we have um, a deodorizer with a double scrubber, or could be to, to diagnose and to minimize neutral oil losses in, in a neutralization process, etc. cetera. Um, and then we have a given scenario of process condition to explore and to determine, of course, uh, to accomplish uh, our objective. And finally, result to check. Okay, so basically, we have two, I would say, two different uh, possible approaches to do this. We can do this by directly executing this uh, industrial test, in which probably we can change one process variable at a time, then to wait the process time to impact on quality parameters of the oil, of, in, of the oil, for instance, then to execute lab results, and, and finally to analyze the results. And as we know, this procedure is uh, is quite cost and time consuming, okay, and sometimes could put in risk uh, the quality of outlet products or even the operation. So this this is the so-called incremental procedure of process optimization. Now, on the other hand, um, if we want to execute a systemic study by taking into account all the variables, uh, all the process variables at the same time, aiming to assess the impact of these variables on quality parameters, the process uh, simulation is the best ally. Okay, since it allows us to explore, I would say, practically an unlimited processing scenarios, um, and therefore, this way, we wide the scope of our process optimization task, and and this is quite important. All this without still going to the plant, and this is this is good, I would say, because we know that I don't know it it happened to you, uh, but Every time uh, the plant process engineer go to the plant to optimize uh, a process, the plant supervisor says, please do not touch anything. So if we can explore different uh, processing scenarios or even, or even play in a given simulation model, this is the best uh, practice. And finally, once we have assessed the optimum processing scenario by process simulation, then we can go to the plant to execute a test run, uh, but the difference here is that we are going to have a high level of certainty of the result uh, we are going to get. <clears throat> okay, so uh, the first question here uh, that arises is what is process modeling and simulation? Process modeling um, is I would say that is the activity tending to represent an industrial process, okay? By describing the fundamental phenomena that occurs in it. And this is done by means of mathematical equations. So this way, the equations are used to calculate, for instance, uh, pro properties of compounds involved in, the, in our process, or to calculate the phenomena that takes place in each unit operation of our process. So in a few words, process modeling is a tool to execute different kind of simulations in order to predict the, the impact in the process and in, in the product when we change um, the process variable or 
the input data of uh, inlet streams. <coughs> um, so, typically, we have these five key building blocks uh, to take into consideration when constructing a process model. And these are uh, the compounds, the compounds Ill involved in our process, the compounds properties, normally the most important are uh, the temperature dependent properties. Of course, um, the type of uh, process that we have uh, to, 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 to construct the, the simulation model, how to model um, each equipment of our process, and this is also key, um, the an, an appropriate thermodynamic, thermodynamic model, sorry, mostly when we have a liquid vapor equilibrium, for instance, uh, in, in our case, uh, the authorization process. Um, and so once we have our process model validated against, um, against lab results and, and our process conditions of, of, of our plant, we can execute other um, type of simulation studies, okay? Um, aiming, for instance, uh, to predict uh, the composition of outlet streams, um, to, to analyze and to verify the most convenient process conditions in terms of um, operative expenses or even to, um, well, even to understand in, in, in depth um, our process. So all these simulations and analysis give us an in-depth, I would say, knowledge about our process uh, that many times it is not that easy to unveil in the plant only with lab results or even just to um, watching uh, what is going on with, uh, for instance, uh, in the in our deodorizer. Okay, let, let, let us let us talk um, about some theoretical concept of deodorization. So, but first, as we know, the deodorization process is, is one of the, um, is one of the uh, economic hurt of today's refinery, okay? Fundamentally, I would say, in terms of steam consumption. So, um, uh, how much stripping steam uh, is used in, in the deodorizer, and then how much motive steam we need in the vacuum system for a given, uh, to achieve a given uh, absolute pressure or, or vacuum inside uh, the other riser. And on the other hand, as we know, it is a critical stage along, along the, um, the entire refining process, since it is the last refining stage. And uh, well, uh, we have to comply nowadays and strict quality specification of different uh, quality parameters. I don't know, uh, maximum residual uh, free fatty acid concentration in the deodorized oil, uh, a, a given thocophore concentration as well, or, or even uh, a maximum uh, content of uh, trans isomers and, and, and so on. So, um, now, from, from the equipment side, we know that there are different kinds of deodorizers with bubbling trays, okay, this one uh, that I am pointing uh, in, this, in this corner, um, with the steam lift pump trays, this, this different type of trays with uh, steam lift pump trays, uh, sorry, lift steam uh, pumps, uh, or or the so-called mammoth pumps, and um, also we can find deodorizers with a structured packing, or even a, a, a combination of, of all these um, internal devices. So the first question that immediately came up is, do all deodorizers have the same performance? And if not, how we relate this comparative performance in terms of how much uh, stripping steam we need, uh, in terms of um, a given compound being stripped, for instance, um, free fatty acids, in terms of oil yield, okay? And on the other hand, know that we deal 
with complex compounds. Um, as we know, in uh, a given vegetable oil, either soybean oil, palm oil, or grapeseed oil, um, it's, it's a, it's a multi-compound mixture. So, in which uh, each compound of this multi-compound mixture has its own characteristics in terms of vapor pressure, um, vaporization heat, um, density, molecular weight, uh, etc. So it is mandatory to take into, into consideration each compound composition in, in, in a given um, vegetable oil stream. Uh, and, and in our case, moreover, if we uh, are going to execute calculations, of course, because the composition at the inlet impacts on the deodorization performance and on the composition of the deodorized oil. And uh, one, one important thing here is to understand the phenomena uh, involved in, in the deodorization process. So um, <clears throat> I, have, I have put in this slide the, the, these two type of internals, okay? Um, a deodorizer with the with the steam lift pump trays and this um, deodorizer with a structured uh, packing. And well, we know that the deodorization process uh, of vegetable oils is in fact an a steam stripping process in which more volatile compounds are stripped. Okay, so in a, a stripping uh, in, in a stripping process um, such as uh, the deodorization, either using a steam lift pump or or using a structure packing uh, or a combination of both, we have these um, five key aspects involved during the stripping of these more volatile compounds from vegetable oils, and these are. Um, a, a thermodynamic um, equilibrium, okay, in which uh, we consider a phase equilibrium between the, the liquid and the vapor, in this case the vegetable oil and the uh, stripping steam that we are using. Uh, we have a mass transfer, okay, and this mass transfer is influenced by the compound composition the contact time between the vegetable oil and the steam, and the type of equipment, okay, the, the type of internal devices that we have in our deodorizer. Um, the other phenomena is, is the hydraulic, okay? I, I have put here the pressure drop, and, and this hydraulic behavior, um, which uh, it is related to the composition again and, and to the equipment characteristics is very important because as we know the pressure drop uh, uh, has an impact on the on the real or, or on the actual um, vacuum that we can achieve in our deodorizer and finally we have um, a given side reactions some of them are side reactions, which are um, uh, triglyceride, diglyceride, and monoglyceride hydrolysis. Um, we have sometimes the coferol, and in the case of in the case of palm oil, carotenoid degradation, and also we have, which is th this this is a side uh, reaction, a cis trans isomerization, and finally we have sometimes um, a liquid. Um, liquid vapor entrainment, okay? That typically, this is the oil carryover um, of oil droplets to the vapor stream um, exceeding the, the deodorization section. Uh, hi, Marcelo. Your sound dropped for us. Oh, there you go. Right, try now. 
Hey, there you go. Okay, sorry. Uh, I just heard something. Um, so in this in this interface, um, in which the mass transfer uh, and this mass transfer is the traffic of compounds. Uh, we we have this tra uh, traffic of compounds that occurs. Okay, from in this case, for instance, from from the oil phase to the to the uh, vapor phase, which is the mostly the uh, stripping steam that we are using. Um, and in the case of this uh, structured packing, the mass transfer occurs between an oil layer wetting the the, the packing surface and the steam uh, stream going up, going up uh, through the column. And in the tray, um, basically uh, occurs uh, in between the the steam bubbles. Okay, we are injecting either from the from, from the bubbling at the bottom or from the steam injected inside uh, of the lift pump, and of course the the, uh, the oil circulating um, along the along of each trace. Um, so <clears throat> I, I put here in this slide um, a mass balance. So. Uh, let, let us see a mass balance for a given compound I, which applies to any type of deodorizer, okay, with trays or, or with a structured, uh, a structured packing. So here, compound I rep represents each of the compounds we have in the oil: fatty acid, uh, monoglyceride, glycoferol, etc. So this compound traffic or mass transfer that I was mentioning before through the interface. Um, Besides the thermodynamic equilibrium of the phases, it is controlled by, by these three variables. Okay, the the interfacial area, which is um, how this contact of phases is taking place, and the mass transfer coefficient in in each of uh, these phases. Okay, vapor phase and, and liquid phase, and, and the mass transfer coefficient. In a way, it's a measure of how effective and how fast is this mass transfer of compounds. Okay, so uh, of course th this is this is complex from the point of view of the equations and phenomena involved in the process, but absolutely relevant to consider if we want to understand, comprehend the the deodorization process, um, aiming to execute a given process optimization, and of course. Absolutely mandatory if we want to um, uh, execute a given uh, deodorization model. The good thing is that we don't have, if we already have um, a simulation model, we don't have to write um, down each time all this equation because, in my case, all these equations are already um, included in, in the simulation model. Okay, so and finally, uh, Finally, with the, with this introduction about um, theoret theoretical concepts, um, the differences in stripping performance are strongly influenced by these uh, three variables that I was mentioning uh, in, in the other slide. Um, and the influence of these three um, key variables depend on the type of, of on the type of internal internals of the the other eyes, Okay, and in the case of a packing, the interfacial area is strongly dependent on the specific uh, packing surface. Okay, while in a steam lift pan tray, it is related with the bubble size um, and the quantity of bubbles we have in in our tray, and also on on how these bubbles are formed. Uh, not only uh, outside of the steam lift pumps, but also inside of the steam lift pumps, um, and in and um, and the mass transfer coefficient. Okay, for instance, for the case of a structure packing, are uh, influenced by the the channel angle of of the uh, structure packing, the boy fraction, and 
and from this from the side of the of the faces it is related is in function of vapor and liquid velocities and also to some uh, important uh, properties of the compounds in the oil which is the diffusivities and for the case of the thin leaf plant tray uh, the these two mass transfer coefficients are in function of the ball size uh, the bubble diameter and again uh, diffusivities of uh, the compounds and the velocity of both both phases and um, so normally normally uh, we have a much higher interfacial area in a structured packing due to the surface area that offers the packing than in a tray which leads leads into a much better contact between the oil and the stripping steam that we are injecting and then to a lower steam consumption for the same let us say the same stripping duty for example to remove a given uh, free fatty acid content in the in the in the inlet oil and this is why uh, probably you already know we typically use uh, less injection steam to the deodorizer when we have a, a structured packing uh, in in our deodorizer <clears throat> okay well let, let us start with the core purpose of this webinar which is the use of process simulation uh, in deodorization um, okay in this case i am going to show how how to use this process simulation model for a soybean oil uh, deodorization with a single scrubber and and this um, deodorization model was built for um, a soybean oil capacity uh, plant of um, a thousand ton per day and a deodorizer uh, with trays okay of course trays uh, using uh, a steam lift pump and also i consider it using uh, eight kilos per ton of stripping steam um, which is, I would say, typical. Uh, also, three millibar absolute uh, as uh, as vacuum inside the deodorizer, and 245 Celsius degrees uh, for deodorization temperature. And, and for the for the bleach serving oil entering to the deodorizer, um, I am considering um, a free fatty acid content of uh, 0 0.09 percent um, mass percent uh, measure it as a lake a lake as okay so here our process let us say our process objectives um, when we execute different uh, simulation runs will be uh, to optimize the stripping steam mass flow rate to be injected uh, in the deodorizer okay this is one this is this is going to be one of the objectives and on the other hand to check how is the free fatty acid removal in in each in each deodorization tray okay I mean to analyze if we have some optimization room in this regard uh, mostly in terms of uh, in this in, in, in terms of uh, the free fatty acid removal um, okay, um, let us consider, or I am considering, this typical uh, deodorization process in which we have a uh, drying stage, we have a heat recovery stage, okay, inside the deodorizer, a final uh, heating uh, stage using high pressure resin, and three and three deodorization uh, trays. Okay. And also, we have a, a conventional uh, packing system um, using cooling water and indirect steam condensers. <clears throat> um, so uh, now I'm going to show I'm going to show you the deodorization model. Okay. Um, I hope. Now you are seeing uh, the simulation model. Um, I don't know, Dan, if you if you can 
uh, check me if, yeah, if everyone is through. okay great great thank you um okay let us see let us see um uh, the deorization simulation model for this case and and how it works okay so as as we as we as we can see um all the process sections that we that we have in the deodorization flow diagram uh, of the former slide are modeled. Okay, here we have the, the oil dryer, uh, the heating tray with the heat recovery and the final the final heating stage, uh, and the three deodorization uh, trays. Okay, so as I was saying, and in order to give to, to, to get rigorous results, it is important to consider all the, um, the process streams, okay, for, for, for the oil and, and the steam, and, and of course to take into account um, the, the composition of the oil. So here we, we have the deodorizer, such as I was mentioning, but also all the, the main streams, okay, that we have in, in our process. So if I click here, we are going to see that we have uh, the composition of our oil, in this case, sovinol. And I don't have just... Um, oh, sorry to interrupt, Marcelo. Is it is it possible to zoom in a little bit? Sorry, again? The text is a little small on the diagram. As it is small. Yeah, is it possible to zoom in at all? Uh, let me see. Uh, let me see. I don't think I can do it. It's quite a small. Okay. Well, uh, yeah. Well, thanks for checking. You can continue. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Probably the um, <clears throat> the numbers and, uh, uh, and here the the name of the composition. It, let me check if I can increase this. I don't think so, but I'll try. Uh, No, I don't think so. Okay, but basically, what we have in this window is the is the um, is the actual composition of uh, sodium. Okay, in terms of the the different type of free fatty acid that we can find in in the sodium oil, palmitic oil, um, palmitic acid, stearic acid, oleic acid, linolenic, uh, linoleic, linolenic, uh, and also well, for coffrol, the, the the, um, the content of triglyceride, monoglyceride, diglyceride, cytosterol, and so on. Okay, um, and what we can do here is, for instance, to change I don't know the temperature of the deodorization, and here we can change the mass flow rate of the stripping steam that we are using. For instance, here I can change the mass flow rate, which uh, I am going to do it uh, in a few moments. And so on. Um, okay. Um, so I'm going to do it, but every time we, we change something, we go here to flow sheet and then we click on solve. Okay. So every time, um, well, okay, in this case was was quite quick because I didn't change uh, <clears throat> I didn't change anything. But every time a given stream or a given uh, unit operation change from black to yellow means that all the equations that I was mentioning before, I don't know, a mass balance or the calculation of compound, compound properties uh, is executed. Okay? And finally, when everything, um, all the calculations are ended, uh, we have the model such as we are watching now. And here we can see uh, the different the different sheets that we can uh, use for further analysis. In, in here uh, we have a simplified flow diagram in where we can uh, check um, the mass flow rate the mass flow rate um, and the composition of our soybean oil entering to the deodorizer. We can also uh, check the results in terms of the deodorized soybean oil. 
we can check the mass flow rate of uh, the distillates, the composition. Um, we can also check, and all all of these numbers are, are are the result from the simulation. Okay, we can check the deodorization conditions and also the the global loss of our uh, last simulation run. Here we have a much more detailed study that allow, allow us to, to understand what is um, occurring inside the deodorizer and in each of the deodorization trays. Okay, so for instance, we can check uh, how is the FFA removal um, in each of a outlet of, of uh, each of the deodorization trays, okay, and to check um, the, the the final free fatty acid contained in the oil exceeding each of the trays. <clears throat> okay, um, going to come back to my presentation. Um, so, ah, yeah, one last, one last uh, thing here in this model, which is very important to mention. Um, as you can see, this column is not modeled as a black box, but we have. Uh, all the different stages, okay, that we have in in, in our deodorizer. So, um, in each of these sections, what we are doing is modeling each of the sections that we have in our actual deodorizer. Okay, so this is this is not a, this is not a black box model. Okay, um, so let us come back to our objectives. Objectives. And which are uh, I'm going to go so this last simulation run uh, I have put the Simulation, uh, yeah, the process condition that I was mentioning uh, in in the in one of the slides when I presented the case study. So, what we can see here, for instance, is that in terms of the free fatty acid uh, removal and in terms of the free fatty acid content in the oil, um, we can we can. We can see that at the outlet of the second deodorization tray, we already uh, achieve our objective of uh, free fatty acid um, uh, content that typically is 0.05 percent. Okay, and finally at the outlet of the of the third deodorization tray, we we get 0.04 percent. Okay, so <clears throat> um, what we can do here is that, uh, or I would say, if our case, if if in our case we have a final target of free fatty acid uh, composition in the deodorized oil of zero point zero five percent, okay. One feasible analysis uh, from this simulation run is that we could reduce the steam injection to the deodorization trays, okay, and to still get 0.05% of free fatty acid content in the deodorized oil, okay. This is one feasible analysis. So, came back to my, oh, sorry, yeah, so. Now that we know this, that um, at the exit of the the second track, we already get uh, our our uh, target in terms of free fatty acid content in the deodorized oil of zero point zero five percent. We can determine the best strategy of steam injection, okay, uh, in terms of reduction, of course. And I would say that we have these two options to the study. Okay, we can reduce the total steam injection. Um, let me come back to the numbers. 
the, to the total 8 kilos per tons in this case in terms of kilos per hour it's about 334 kilos per hour okay and from from this number we are injecting about a hundred and hundred and seven kilos per hour in the in the um, uh, third deodorization tray so one feasible analysis is that <clears throat> we can reduce this um, this mass flow rate of uh, of um, st stripping steam okay and this is what we are going to analyze now and we can do this by two by these two options okay uh, to inject less steam injection and this less would be the total that we were using uh, um, minus this uh, 106 kilos per hour that we are injecting in the deodorization train 3 by injecting <coughs> uh, this number uh, in the in the three deodorization trays okay or to inject this new stripping steam uh, just to the first two trays uh, deodorization okay and ba basically because we saw that um, in, in tray two we already get uh, a specification in oil regarding the maximum free fatty acid content as, as oleic acid which is 0. Uh, zero five percent okay so let us first reduce the total steam injection okay to the equivalent total steam mass flow rate min minus the steam mass flow rate that uh, we are injecting in the last deodorization train so i came back to the model so basically what i'm going to do is um 327 will be my new um, stripping steam muscle rate that I'm going to use. So I click here. I am going to modify this number and I'm going to put uh, 277. Okay. As you can see, everything now is black. And I go to flow sheet and solve. And now the, the model is running, uh, recalculating all the equations involved in, in the model, aiming <clears throat> to take into consideration that I have changed um, the mass flow rate uh, of the stripping steam. Sometimes this this takes a while, okay? Uh, but okay, it was sort of fast. So now the model um, uh, has ended. All the calculations are converged. And we can check our results. And we can do this by going again to our um, detail stat, detail study, sorry. And I'm going to update uh, the results. Okay. So basically, I click here, and we are going to see what happened now that I have reduced uh, this total stripping steam. To the number that uh, we saw about 227 and um, yeah we, we are going to check what happened here with the free fatty acid uh, content which uh, let, let us wait for a few seconds more we should now um, have this same value okay yeah so as we can see since now uh, I have reduced the total uh, stripping steam to the deodorizer uh, to the equivalent that I was using in the last deodorization tray okay we get our uh, free fatty acid um, target okay so basically we have reduced the total stripping steam that we are using, and we still get our uh, free fatty acid uh, target related to the um, quality specification for our deodorized oil. So now what I am going to do is, because this one 
this this was uh, one of the options. The other option is is quite the same, but what I am going to do is to simulate that I am injecting the the, uh, the same mass flow rate, okay, but just not to the um, to the three the deodorization trays, but just to the the two first uh, deodorization trays, okay. Um, so I'm going to do this. And how I do this? Basically, this is uh, a splitter of the different uh, stripping steam uh, stream going to the the different sections of the deodorizer. So basically, I am going to consider that in the third deodorization tray, I am not injecting um, stripping steam. And that I am going to inject um, the stripping steam just for the uh, deodorization tray one and two. So I'm going to put here the equivalent uh, percentages. Okay. Now everything again is black, so I have to go to flow sheet, run, uh, solve, and the model is running again. It was quite fast again. I'm going to update the, the results here. And I hope we are going to get exactly um, the same values here, okay? Um, but we should achieve here 0.05% of free fatty acid content, okay? And basically, uh, such as I set in the model here, we are not going to uh, have any. Uh, Injection of strepinastin. Yeah. Okay. So, what I have uh, done in this last simulation uh, run was just to inject the same strepinastin, but just to the uh, first two deodorization trays, and I get also the same uh, free fatty acid content of my uh, target. Uh, so, as we see, we have two different options or two different strategies. This one could be useful is we can um, we can uh, avoid going with the oil to the to the last in this case the deodorization tray three. And um, by doing this, in a way, we are also uh, reducing the, um, the deodorization time, I mean, the, the, the contact time uh, inside of the uh, deodorizer. And this could be also in case we want to reduce uh, the, cistran, the, the cistrans isomerization. Okay, this this second uh, strategy. <coughs> Okay, um, so, uh, as we saw, in the last uh, the other try, we, did, we reduce, uh, I mean, uh, as we saw, in our last deodorization tray, we can say that we have some some room Okay, of extra capacity to remove uh, free fatty acid uh, from the oil. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, what we are going to 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 try now uh, is to to translate this extra capacity in 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 terms of extra uh, free fatty acid removal from the oil, considering now that. Uh, we have a bit higher uh, free fatty free fatty acid content in the bleach uh, in the bleach oil, okay, entering to the to the deodorizer, okay. So uh, what I am going to do now is to consider that instead of uh, zero point zero nine, uh, such as I had uh, until now. Uh, as free fatty acid content in the oil entering to the deodorizer, I am going to consider that the oil entering to the deodorizer 
uh, has a free fatty acid content of 0.12%. Okay, and uh, our target of residual free fatty acid content in the deodorized oil will be exactly the same. Okay, our objective will be to 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 get 0.05% mass uh, as oleic acid. Okay, so we are going to check if we need to increase the stripping steam and finally we are going to um, to analyze what happens in terms of OPEX related to this uh, increase of free fatty acid in the bleach so we know entering entering to the to the to the deodorizer so I'm going to come back to the to the model and going to try to do it quick so I'm going to put again uh, the eight kilos per ton of a stripping um, steam. Going to solve again. Okay. While the model is executing, we are going to compare these two different processing scenarios in where we have, in one case, a higher free fatty acid content. Uh, in this last sheet, this last sheet allows us to compare the, the the OPEX that we have in two different simulation runs. Okay, so in this first column, um, sorry, in this first column is the OPEX that we have if we consider uh, a free fatty acid um, content in the in the bleach oil of 0.09 percent, and in this second one will be sir, the 0. Point uh, 12 uh, mass percent of free fat, yes. But first, you need to change the composition. So, probably you cannot see it quite clear. Um, but here I am changing the, um, the composition of oleic acid and I now increasing uh, the composition to 0.12 percent. Okay, again, the model is black and I'm going to. Click on solve to calculate um, again all the equations involved in the model. Okay. So I hope that we are going to get uh, maximum 0.05% uh, in the in the last deodorization trains since this extra capacity that we saw that we had that we have. Okay, the simulation model uh, has ended. We can now go here. I'm going to click and update the calculations. Um, sorry, it takes a while sometimes to, to export uh, all the results from the simulation model to the different uh, Excel sheets because um, <clears throat> there are a lot of results and numbers and so on. But uh, probably just in a few seconds more. Okay, well, probably, well, it's a slightly higher, okay? Probably we have to. To decrease to zero point, uh, let me see. I'm going to check again. Yeah, eight kilos. Yeah. Probably we have to reduce it to zero point eleven percent. Okay. Okay. This this extra capacity. I'm going to do it again. Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to solve again. Just to check.
Okay, well, it's still is um, a little bit higher than 0 0.05, so we had two different options, to reduce the free fatty acid content uh, in the bleach oil or to slightly increase, um, probably here we can, let us try, 336. Let us check what happened now. Okay. Ah, okay, okay, no, I know what is going on. Yeah, I had two. I know what is going on. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot to uh, distribute on uh, distributing thing to, to the three deodorization tray, sorry. Well, I'm going to do it right now. That was a problem. <clears throat> I think I am exceeding a little bit uh, my, my presentation time, but yeah. This was the problem. I'm going to put again, um, yeah, 32, 32, 32. Well, the thing was that I forgot to distribute all the strippings into the three deodorization trains. So I'm going to solve again. Let us, let's see if, I'm going to take a while, but I'm going to try to do it. Okay, I was fast. I'm going to update calculation probably now that we are, but okay, but this was good, okay? Because um, let us now check what happens that uh, re related to this number, what happened now considering that we are injecting uh, the stripping the steam to the three deodorization trays. I think that now we are going to get 0.05% FFA content in the deodorized oil, I hope. At least was the numbers that I was getting when I, um, I was uh, doing uh, the calculations prior to, to this presentation. Yeah, now we get 0 .0, 0 0.05 uh, FFA mass percent as oleic acid. So we are still in our um, target in terms of free fatty acid in the deodorized oil. Okay, using the same uh, stripping steam and taking uh, taking the advantage of our extra capacity, let us say, of the of our deodorizer. So, and now I'm going to let us check quickly uh, the numbers in in terms of uh, operative expenses. So, going to increase. I'm going to make some zoom here. Here we have uh, the different composition of simulation run one and simulation run two when we had 0.09% FFA and 0.12 that we have now FFA in the bleach oil. In our cases, we are um, below or at the same uh, target of our free fatty acid um, content related to the um, quality specification. Okay. And in this case, we are getting a much higher distillate from the uh, from the deodorizer. Again, okay? this is quite uh, um, quite expectable since we are uh, removing uh, a bit more uh, free fatty acid from the from the um, oil entering to the deodorizer. So here we have the uh, operative expenses, okay, of our deodorization, and here we have. The uh, operative expensive expenses in terms of um, the thing that we are using, the cooling water, the chemical, and so on. And in both cases, it's the same we, because we, have, uh, we haven't changed anything in terms of the theme, chemical, uh, cooling water, and so on. And now this is, uh, and, and this is the operative expenses in terms of the um, oil losses, let us say. And in the second case, since we are removing much more free fatty acid than before, we have uh, a bit higher losses in terms of oil losses, okay? So this is a difference um, 
of 0.12% of extra OPEX in our second uh, simulation run. Now, the thing is that this extra oil losses means that we can sell uh, much more distillate. And if we add, <clears throat> uh, but now if we include to the, this economical equation the incomes from distillate sale, which now are higher in amount, we have an increased or let us say cost saving of about 0.34 dollars per ton of oil processed okay um, in this case considering um, uh, a market price for the distillate of two thousand dollars per ton which is I think quite conservative so globally this give us um, about 0.22 dollars per ton oil uh, of saving and about uh, $5,000 per month of saving. And if we consider uh, an entire year, we are getting a saving of about uh, $63,000 a year, okay? And this was just because we have increased um, the free fatty acids entering to the deodorizer. And this is because uh, we, we know that we can get a much higher um, price if we sell distillate than if we sell salt stock. Um, okay, this this was it. I think we are quite exceeded in terms of uh, time presentation. Um, so this is some conclusions that I have put in my slides. Uh, Think since uh, this this presentation, this webinar uh, is recorded, you you will be able to read them uh, later. Uh, Hi, Marcelo. So, this is Dan. We have a question. Uh, yeah. When you use a simple stripping formula for fatty acid removal, you have to adjust the calculation using an efficiency factor based on experience. How is the simulation dealing with this? Is it taking account of the trade geometry without using the experimental factor? Sorry again, can you repeat me the question? I couldn't hear you properly. Yeah. Um, Sorry. When you use a simple stripping formula for fatty acid removal, you have to adjust the calculation using an efficiency factor based ah, on yeah, experience. Yeah, yeah. How is the simulation dealing with this? Is it taking into account the trade geometry without using the experimental factor? Yeah, okay, okay, yes, yes, yes. This is a really good um, question. Uh, this efficiency factor that we typically use when, uh, when using the, the simple the stripping formula, which I think um, the question is referring to the, to the Bailey equation, is avoided in this simulation model. Typically, uh, and and this is avoided uh, because uh, we are considering the mass transfer. Okay, the mass transfer. We are considering uh, how is the impact of the different internal devices that we have in our deodorizer in in the equation of the simulation model. Okay, so we do not need typically, depending on the simulation model, uh, to consider any efficiency factor. Um, why? Because we are considering the, the mass transfer, and of course, um, the, the the temperature uh, dependent um, properties of the different compounds, such as uh, vapor pressure, um, vaporization heat, uh, diffusivities, and so on. Okay, and we have another question here. Can we yeah. use this simulation to get a particular amount of a component? For example, monoglycerides and diglycerides. Can we use this to get the particular amount? Um, well, let let me let me see if I understand. Uh, I think that this question is referring to 
uh, to get a, a given composition of monoglycerin and diglycerin in the in the final probably in the final deodorized oil. Well, <clears throat> what you what uh, you can do with the simulation uh, model is to, uh, for instance, considering different different uh, monoglyceride and diglycerin composition in the bleach oil entering to the deodorizer, and and then uh, depending the the deodorizing uh, or, or the, depending on the process condition that you consider, I don't know temperature, the vacuum, or the stripping steam, to check what happens uh, in terms of monoglyceride and diglyceride content in the deodorized oil. That that this is something that you can do. On the other hand, this simulation model is considering uh, some diglyceride and triglyceride uh, hydrolysis. So uh, this means that uh, the concentration of diglyceride among, and monoglyceride in both distillate and deodorized streams will be affected of, of this uh, site reaction. I hope uh, my answer. Thanks. Looks like we have one more. Um, yeah. Can you use the simulation to design the best shape and arrangement of gas lift pumps? Can you use? Uh... Well, uh, it's a really good question. Really good question. Um, we could. The thing is, uh, the. The arrangement of um, gas or, or a steam lift pump that we have in, in a given tray is influencing uh, the interfacial area, is influencing uh, by, by the, the, the quantity of bubbles that we form inside the, the tray or inside the, the steam lift pump uh, that we have in our tray. And so, if possible, the thing is that depending on the arrangement of uh, steam lift pumps and depending on, um, I don't know, the, the geometrical characteristics of these pumps, then we have to uh, recalculate the, um, the interfacial area uh, for, for this model. Okay, is this possible? It is sort of complicated. You had to take into account the, the fluid dynamics and so on, but it's possible. Um, okay, it looks like there isn't any other questions. Uh, some comments from Alan that on an industrial scale, he hasn't seen any difference in results between different designs. Uh, but it seems that there ought to be a difference, but it's hard to measure. Mm. Okay. Um, in different designs, um, I don't know if Alan is referring um, different designs in terms of different um, internal devices, such as a pub, just a trace with just. Uh, bubbling at the bottoms or considering um, steam lift pumps or, cons or, or considering structured packings. Um, I think that we, uh, we can uh, have quite differences uh, for the same stripping duty, I don't know, for instance, Um, he says different types of pumps and general bubbling. We have also used a mix of the two. Might be also a good uh, informed connect. Also, might be a good place Free to continue the discussion. Or the the if we. If Okay, uh, different types of pumps and general. Okay, okay. I, I'm reading now that 
there is not uh, much difference considering um, considering uh, different types of pumps and, and, and general public. Okay, yeah, might be, uh, but again, uh, this is very related to the interfacial area that we can get, um, related to how all these steam bubbles are formed, either if we have um, a simple bubbling or if we have um, steam lift pumps. Um, and the last question, if I am going to be in the LAOCS in Brazil, well, uh, um, I am not going to be there. I would like to, but I am not going to be there. Sorry, but you, um, you can you, you can contact me by email or by phone. Okay, well, I think that's it then for questions. Uh, thank you, Marcelo, for presenting. Oh, don't mention it. Uh, I am grateful uh, of presenting this webinar. All right. uh, actually, maybe we can sneak in one more. Does it pos is it possible to mitigate the 3-MCPD and glycidol? Sorry? Uh, we have maybe sneak in one more question here. Um, okay. Is it possible to mitigate... 3 MCPD and glycidol. Um, I'm not sure. Okay. That's... Yes, it is feasible. The thing is that uh, not in this case, and I didn't, uh, I didn't do it so far. I have to um, include in the compound library and the uh, yeah th this kind of compound. Okay, the 3 MCPD. Is it? Is, uh, it is possible. Um, the thing is that, uh, in fact, I am in the process of. Um, of um, well, uh, building all the temperature dependent properties properties for for the 3M CPD, and this is this is not easy, but I am doing it um, um, right now. It's not ready, but I hope in the future I'm going to have uh, uh, well uh, ready to to use it. Ah, but the question was thank you, not really effective. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you. Oh, thank sorry, you. Go ahead. Okay, well, thank you, Marcelo, and thank you, everyone, for listening. Have a good day. Bye-bye, and thank you all, all of you. Bye.